believe it or not, there was actually a time in this country where political figures were seen as role models. Athletes were seen as the opposite of this, just big dumb jocks who could run and jump high. And while those guys definitely do still exist, and there's no shortage of villains here within the sports world, some of the people in this country I respect as men the most actually play a quote unquote game for a living. DeMar Hamlin is one of the greatest reflections of this fact. He's probably done more to help his city than most politicians. He's the type of guy I want my son to grow to be like. Not these clowns who just live to throw dirt on the other party. DeMar Hamlin grew up in McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania, where he sadly lost many childhood friends to gun violence. During an interview, after doing the math in his head, he estimated that over half his friends he grew up with were dead. This was coming from a kid who was in his early 20s. That pain could have forced him into a weapon of destruction. But instead of destruction, DeMar Hamlin focused on building. He became a light for his community, showing others the way. When he was 12 years old, he attended what he thought was only a procedural court hearing for his dad. But like a twist in a dark movie, at the end of the hearing, the judge loudly banged his gavel. DeMar's dad got 10 years. As the guards crept closer and closer to his dad, the fear of that reality took hold of DeMar. In that moment, the reality was so strong and sobering that a 12-year-old kid completely lost his imagination. At that point, he could only see what was right there in front of him. Pain, loss, and a multitude of tragedies. DeMar says the whole ordeal was even tougher on his mom, but she didn't tuck her head. Hell no, she went harder. To save her son from the same fate as his dad or worse, she quickly realized that she would have to make some changes. She took him out of public school and put him into a private one. But even with the help of the school's financial aid, price of tuition stretched the finances to the max. So now she had to work pretty much non-stop, but she ain't just work, like she was a whole boss. She ran multiple businesses, a daycare and a cleaning business. And at the time, all the spoils went towards her kid's future. In that environment, free time was a dangerous proposition. You could get caught up with the gangs or the drugs or the violence. So DeMar's days were filled with school school and then practice. From there he went straight to the cleaning business to help out his mom. That's when my whole outlook on life really changed. I had to take reality for reality and couldn't be a kid anymore. It was just me and my mom now trying to survive. I had to grow up really fast and instill toughness in me. That mental toughness, it really built that work ethic in me. Just that time with not having my dad around. I had to be a man. In an article on golongtd.com, DeMar tells the stories of a few of his lost friends. One kid he grew up with named Jeremiah Jones actually shared the same NFL dreams as DeMar. He was a quarterback, blossoming into a star player, but in 2017, he lost his life to gun violence. He goes on to speak of another friend named Jimmy Wapo, a Pittsburgh rapper who DeMar was close with. DeMar saw Jimmy as a beacon of hope, and he envisioned the two doing great things in the community. So it's like, you'd be like, Dad, like, how do I want to really leave my mark on this world? Do I want to leave it like that? Not like that. In this clip, you hear Jimmy, grateful for life, pondering how to leave a positive mark on the world. Then one year later, after this clip was recorded, tragedy strikes again. So DeMar was at Pitt taking a power nap before class. Then the next thing you know, he's awakened by sirens. Since the campus is located in the middle of the inner city, there was always the chance that sound was someone DeMar knew. This time was no different. Jimmy had been shot. Someone found him, gave him CPR, and rushed him to the hospital. Given the path DeMar walked, you never even imagined that he would have to experience something eerily similar. But on January 2nd, 2023, and there he was getting CPR as his life hanging in the balance. The way I grew up teaches you to cherish everybody in your life because you never know who you will lose. You could lose anybody. Everybody I talk to, I say I love you. And that right there is a neighborhood tradition. Seems like losing people so young, mostly to gun violence, really taught DeMar the true value of a life. And on that Monday night, as he laid there on that field, he taught all of us what he already knew. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the story of DeMar Hamlin. Hoping y'all enjoy. Other than that, cue the way. Okay, real quick before we jump in, 
time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, SeatGeek. So you're probably familiar with SeatGeek at this point, but for those of y'all who aren't, let me give you the quick rundown. SeatGeek is an app that offers tickets to live events, NFL games, college games, NBA, etc. They also have tickets to concerts, festivals, and more, all gathered in one place to help you find the best deal. They grade each ticket using a simple coloring system. Green deals are good deals, red deals are bad. So if you want to attend a game before the season actually ends, you should definitely check out SeatGeek for the best deals on tickets. So click the link in the description and download the SeatGeek app and use my code FLIMLO for $20 off your first purchase. Again, that's code FLIMLO, all right? Use it at checkout and save yourself $20 off your first purchase. Man, shout out to SeatGeek once again for sponsoring the video. And without further ado, it's time to jump back in. He focused on staying away from dangerous situations, situations that took away so many of his friends. His dad only ended up serving three and a half years, so he was back in DeMar's life by the time he hit high school. When he came home, he was happy to find out that his son hadn't grown into a beast on the streets. He had grown into a beast, but he ran things on the field. He was a hard-nosed safety who was as tough as they come. This dude was a dog. He had 48 offers. Ohio State, Clemson, like all the big schools. But he chose to stay home at the University of Pittsburgh. But why go there as opposed to getting away? He did it for one selfless reason. That was the mirror handling. Damar's little brother. I really wanted to give him that image growing up that he can look back on and be able to model himself after. That's something I never had. I had a bunch of examples of what not to do and I want to give him a different example. Growing up, I always questioned if I was doing things right just because I didn't have anybody to look up to to say like, this is the right thing that you should be doing. I didn't have anybody I could look to or lean on. So that's why I decided to stay home in Pitt. I chose Pitt over everybody for one reason, my brother. Despite the way he came up, he grew into such a selfless person. While most people in these environments are only out for self. Even deeper than that, look at the country as a whole. People turn a blind eye to those in need every day. Local governments turn down proposals that would help heal the country. All cause a couple rich dudes might lose a couple dollars. Everybody's out for self because that's the example. When you look up to the top, like that's how they all move. So the natural reaction is to gather up all your stuff and to hold that shit as tight as you possibly can. But a very select few are immune to this disease. The chosen ones who we hope can bring real change in the future. At one point in high school, this kid with 48 offers gets injured and can't play in the championship game. But because he's Damar, he still insisted on doing literally anything to help out his team. After finally accepting that he was too injured to play, this man now insisted on carrying the water bottles. His coaches couldn't believe how serious he was about it. And after he badgered them enough, they said, fine, carry the bottles. He approached the job like it was the most important thing on earth it was all he could do so he did it as well as he could given his pedigree you think he hit the ground running at pit but two unsuccessful surgeries to kick off his career will cause dude constant pain and diminish him as a player the doctor who performed the surgery which was for a sports hernia had apparently treated the injury like a regular hernia now while a sports hernia can lead to a regular hernia don't get caught up on the names. These are two different injuries. So with that being the case, you obviously have to treat them different. But the people who did the surgeries apparently didn't know that. So this kid was in pain for two years straight. And he didn't know why, because the surgeries were supposed to fix it. Um, an inguinal hernia is different than a sports hernia, mainly because a sports hernia is not really a hernia at all. I don't know why it's being called that, but it's basically a tear or a fray. So being a dog that he is, he just tried to fight through it. He always gave 100%, but he just couldn't perform. Is actually a weakness or an injury of the abdominal wall uh, where it attaches to the pelvis. Uh, it is not a traditional hernia. Uh, a sports hernia often causes pain uh, doing things like sitting up or doing a coughing or sneezing uh, episode. Uh, sometimes it prevents the athlete from being able to cut or twist or rotate their pelvis because they have pain. Uh, and in some cases, it actually requires surgery to repair this. Unsure of his future, DeMar looked to his past. Both his parents had been bosses, one legal and one illegal. Now you got a decision. You can go that way or go this way. And despite everything he was dealing with, he still made the right choice. 
Based on the way he came up, he knew he had to stay productive. So he started an LLC to occupy his mind. Now the name he came up with is actually still around today as he used the same name as his now famous foundation. After playing two seasons with a messed up sports hernia, Pitt finally sent this man to a real specialist. They performed a third surgery, which was finally done right, and only six months later, he was back to his old self. Now, I don't want to focus too heavy on the negative, but that first team of doctors almost ruined his career. Thankfully, DeMar just needed a few healthy seasons, and that was enough to get him into the league. But if his career didn't start off with two botched surgeries, there's a chance he would have been a much higher draft pick. How does a person in that position not feel some resentment? For DeMar is one word, and that word is purpose. DeMar Hamlin's purpose has always been bigger than football, and it's something he's known and accepted long ago. This allows him to see negative events in his life as tests, things he had to go through to help others along the way. If you ain't never been through nothing, how you gonna understand what it's like? But the hard part is going through it and not allowing it to change you. It's all natural. It's all genuine from the heart. It's not even stuff I have planned out. It'll be things that just pop in my head and I'm going to make sure it all happens. I feel like that's God talking to me. I really feel that's what my purpose is. That's why he put me here. That's why he made me make it to the NFL besides everybody that I lost. Everyone. That's why I'm the one. He knows my heart and he knows my intentions. It's all pure. And that's really what I stand on. So in 2021, this former four-star recruit who had damn near 50 offers gets drafted into the league. But it probably didn't happen quite the way he envisioned. He wasn't taken in the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth round. Due in part to the way he started his career at Pitt, DeMar Hamlin was now a six-round draft pick. He was also on a team with one of the better safety duos in the entire league, so opportunity was limited. But while some may have only seen limited opportunity, all DeMar saw was the opportunity itself. He never sulked or complained. He was ecstatic to be a Bill. And when you hear just some of the things he went through, it's easy to see why. Before he ever got drafted, DeMar took the name of his clothing line and reused that to form the Chasing M's Foundation. Through there, he raises money for a toy drive in the city, and he started this in college when he had zero money. By the way, as a second year six round pick, he's still not making like crazy money, but they did set up a new contract situation for him, but we'll talk about that more towards the end of the video. So like I said, he didn't wait. He just started with what he had. He didn't try to do something great. He just started with something good. The clips you're seeing right now are from his third annual toy drive, something he'd originally funded with a GoFundMe account with a $2,500 goal. To give you an idea of the slow rate in which it grew, it took the first two years just to hit that modest goal. DeMar posted this clip on Christmas Day 2022. You see him helping kids who otherwise may have gone without. And not to mention the parents who might struggle financially, who want to make their kids happy but simply can't afford it. DeMar Hamlin is really a shining beacon of light, but a week after that post, and darkness will fall. In what was one of the biggest Monday night football games ever, DeMar makes a routine tackle, gets up like it's nothing, and then out of nowhere, he falls back to the ground. And it was in that moment that everything went dark. This was a life where so much was endured, so much overcome, and it didn't corrupt him. A kid who lost so many to violence, to prison, but he navigated it all and got himself into college. But there he had to endure even more early on all in essentially the same place he grew up but despite all of that he never lost his desire to be that beacon of hope for the entire community bro he took the straight path did everything right so how's he find himself in this familiar situation ambulance cpr being rushed to the hospital and it almost make you ask like was this fate inescapable but as his family no doubt struggled to find their way through the darkness pitch blackness of the situation seemed to be at its thickest and what really felt like the darkest sports moment something cut through 
the loudest, rowdiest stadium you've ever seen drops to a level of stillness only found in meditation. Instead of using their energy to antagonize opposing fans, crowd came together and sent energy to DeMar. Then the medical professionals just went into flow state. They carried out their procedures with swiftness and precision. And the two football coaches, just humans in that moment. We all remember life is precious. DeMar delivered his message. Uh, real tough, you know, because it's like it's like real life stuff going on, you know. Um, life is bigger than football. One second before this happened, we was bloodthirsty animals who all wanted nothing more than our team to win. But now we were united, our colors combined. Hands joined, hugs shared, his light was being amplified. The love poured in from across the whole country. And after living off a ventilator for days after the incident, we slowly start to get news that DeMar is recovering. Next thing you know, the ventilators turned down from 100% to only 50%. We were making progress. Keep fighting, bro. You got this. We slowly get the updates. They turned him onto his stomach. His lungs were healing well. Next thing you know, he had movement. He was squeezing his family's hands. Then there was that one moment that made athletes tear up. When he asked that one question, we knew he'd be okay. You know, and again, his first, you know, first question that he wrote when he when he started to awaken was, was did we win? So we know that he's really, that it's not only that the lights are on, we know that he's home uh, and that it appears that all, all the cylinders are firing. One of our partners, you know, when, when he asked, did we win? The answer is yes, you know, Damari, you won. You've won the game of life. After only a few days, he's back speaking. He's tweeting. He's back. He made it. He's really a fucking fighter. I wish I could have been there to see the look on his face when he saw his charity with a $2,500 goal. Over only a few days was now at eight and a half million. And the bill set up a contract that would pay him pretty well, so he's still getting paid as he continually recovers. Less than one week after the terrifying incident, Damar was released from the hospital. He's good. Damar has always said that he was put here to help. He had a purpose bigger than football, and look what he's done. He reminded us all of what's really important, the gift of perspective, one we should cherish.